just an hour away from Rome and find himself in a pitch dark ancient tomb, literally walking on pieces of dozens of broken sarcophaguses. Or that in a densely populated area of Europe, in the woods, there are still stone dwellings that look absolutely as if taken out from a fairy tale, as if the elves were surveying the area from this window just a couple of years ago. But apparently modern people prefer the feeling of stability that uh, our history is all figured out. Some learned men have studied everything meticulously and have established the history beyond any doubt. And that is why there is no point to go out there in the woods and explore the actual historic sites. Or in the cases when the historic sites are right in front of their eyes and in many cases in their own backyards, people simply don't seem to bother to check if they correspond to the history that they have been taught in school. Because since early childhood we are always programmed to think that this is work only for historians. Sadly, it seems there weren't that many of a real historians after all in the team that was writing the ancient history of Italy, because if there were true historians, they should have noticed the dense network of rock-cut ruins that covers most of the territory of Italy, if not all of it. Particularly overwhelming was the sheer amount of this style of rock-cut ruins. Thousands, probably many thousands of such remains are found all over every patch of land that has been not plowed again and again for agricultural purposes. Thousands of private properties have cellars belonging to these ruins or they use them as uh, places to store their garden tools, run small businesses like for example restaurants and very often they are used as garages. These garages that you see on the left hand side are actually converted premises inherited from the old civilization. And this is not a single isolated case, it's a very common sight over large parts of Italy. And not only the garages, the entire street is hewn, carved into the solid bedrock by the old civilization. Although the amount of such ruins is simply not discussed by the mainstream so-called historians, its actual existence is not denied as such. The way in which these ruins are misrepresented to the people is they show a single photograph, for example like this one, and then we are told that the Etruscans or some unknown Bronze Age tribe carved it into the rock, preferably as a necropolis. And always, always forgetting to mention that this door belongs to a vast complex of multi-storied dwellings and tunnels that were adorned with graceful art and which, for some unknown mystical reason, nobody wants to excavate nowadays. In some cases, after digging a little bit, they even buried the ruins back. And as they are selling you the story of primitive, barely human tribes digging all this into the solid bedrock, they always forget to mention small details, like for example, 
long chambers of uniform design, as if made to park a train inside so long. Even during a very short expedition like ours, we managed to see more train parking size chambers than we can count, along with assembly size holes on the walls of this particular so-called assembly hall, there was an additional layer of wall decoration that would have rivaled its modern alternatives in terms of looks and, in addition, has already proven that it definitely surpasses them vastly in terms of durability. And when they are telling you the stories of all those primitive tribes building all this, they always forget to mention the extent of the network of the rock-cut roads, or at least they look like roads to us. This is thousands of kilometers of roads! It is absolutely impossible to guess their actual extent, because all of these ruins are barely excavated. But the overall impression that I've been getting is that their density is at least as much as that of the modern Italian roadwork system. According to mainstream so-called history, this roadwork was dug out in Etruscan times when the population of Italy, again, that's part of the mainstream historic wisdom, a uh, sheer jewel of it, was about 200,000 people, which means less than one person per square kilometer. Now, if these are roads at all, the people who build them must have had a radically different idea of what road is than us. In modern times, we also sometimes dig through solid bedrock, but that is only to avoid obstacles. For example, we make a tunnel to avoid steep slopes or something of that sort. But here the concept of these ancient roads is completely different. The full thing is dug into the solid bedrock even when the terrain is perfectly flat. It's like digging thousands of kilometers of opened tunnels. This is a really large amount of work. The leftovers of the digging are also nowhere to be seen around, which seems to be the standard situation, by the way, with all the similar sites which are actually found in uh, many countries over the span of a couple of continents. I find it hard to even comprehend the epic scale of digging that was going on in those times. Initially, the depth of the roads was, let's say, some five or six meters, but as we were traveling further north, it seems that even the average depth would be like 10 meters, sometimes reaching over 15 or even over 20 meters of depth.
these ruins in Italy pose some very deep and important questions regarding the full world history and how it is being interpreted in the schools nowadays. Questions like, for example, why the mainstream historians pretend so stubbornly that they don't notice that these ruins belong to various periods and most probably couple of groups of cultures. That is not at all difficult to notice. For example, we saw very old roads with tracks and everything, no doubt that it is a road. And literally in the middle of it, there is a, a opening. Somebody has dug what is officially supposed to be a, an Etruscan necropolis. And this uh, necropolis or whatever it is, also looks much younger, it is much less eroded. So they always like to associate all the rock cut uh, ruins in the region with the name of the Etruscans, but in reality those that uh, bear the uh, this particular Etruscan style are very few and they are newer looking. The majority of ruins is much older and has nothing to do with the Etruscan style of architecture. What else is very, very suspicious is the total silence regarding the fact that uh, ruins of this style are not uh, peculiar to Italy. They are found all over from Israel to Portugal. And some of the layers are found on almost all continents, the older layers, I mean. And something else, equally suspicious and sad, I saw with my own eyes. For example, in the Monsters Park of Bumarzo, which provided, unfortunately, one out of the many practical examples of how cultural heritage is destroyed and the banner of protecting it. So the Mostri Park of Bumarzo is with paid entrance, maintenance and so on. And while the medieval statues are fenced and cannot be touched, they are being cleaned and restored and so on, at the same time statues that should be more valuable and officially should be classified as Etruscan lay abandoned on the pathway, not besides it, but on the pathway, and children were kicking them as I was watching. There is an UNESCO protected historic site at Turkinia. We are told that it is so fabulous and special and protected because we have original Etruscan paintings in the necropolis, murals. Or at least we are told that they are such. But then why did I see on the walls biblical characters painted in a cartoon style? And how old is this, all of it anyway, all these ruins, roads? On one side they definitely looked pre flood the way they were covered with clay, exactly with clay, not with some cultural layers. That made them look pre flood amongst few other reasons that I will mention in the full-length documentary. On the other hand, most of this is carved on a relatively soft stone called tuff, made from volcanic ash. And still, the tool marks are clearly visible at many places. Sometimes they look even absolutely fresh. That means that the last layers of these cultures that were digging all this existed in the relatively not so distant past. One of the members of our expedition said very wise words. He said, I was afraid that after seeing all the sites here in Italy, I will be much more confused and I will know much less. And that's exactly what happened.